Entering the 2017-18 season, there were questions surrounding the Boston Bruins. But as this team nears the All-Star break, they have weathered some early adversity and emerged as one of the best teams in the NHL. Now Adam McQuaid and the Bees look to keep the positive momentum going as they take on the New Jersey Devils. I got caught back. It's a tough game for 54 and his teammates tonight as the Bees find themselves behind in the second. But resilience is one quality the black and gold have shown all season. And here's Marchand over the line. He's got Krejci with a Marchand right circle. Walks in, back in. He scores! It's a struggle. But thanks to some timely defense and great goaltending, courtesy of Tuka Rask, the Bruins got out the 3 2 win. Uh, some nights we're going to struggle with execution. That's normally a play against good teams. We're not going to win every battle. But I do believe that you know we want to stick to our standard to keep winning. All right? Keep winning, keep winning, keep playing well, keep playing well, keep playing our way so we can beat every team every night in this league, or at least you know, capable of that. All right? So, hey, hang in there, guys. It wasn't easy as, as, as we know, but uh, hey, character winning. Find ways to win and park play, great job defense. The NHL All-Star break has arrived, and most of the Bruins roster will get a well-deserved respite, except for B's forward Brad Marchand, who is here and will be playing in his second All-Star game. Yeah, very excited. I uh, feel a little better having an idea of, of how, it, how it works and uh, kind of what happens. Um, Always fun to have the family along too, so yeah, I'm excited, it should be fun. The All-Star Game is, of course, supposed to be fun. So there's always a lot more than hockey going on when the sport's most gifted players gather each year. Chip and chase, chip and chase. Oh my God, you got absolutely dusted. Oh my God, I made that look easy. You gotta shave the head now. <laughs> Come on, baby, a step up. Bigger than I am. Holy oh, sh! Those are claws. You have a bigger nose than I do. Will you give me a kiss? Oh yeah. No, no, no. You give me give on the lips. On the lips. Give me a kiss. What do you mean? Give me a kiss. Hey, give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. He's ready, yes. Give me a kiss. Oh, he's gonna, yeah, he's, yeah, he's gonna attack. Kiss. Say hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. You wanna go there? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Don't bite. Hey! They gotta get me one of these. This year, the All-Star Game happens to coincide with the Gasparilla Pirate Festival, Tampa's biggest party. So, of course, Brad wants to participate. How about uh, you? you guys from? You look pretty Gasparilla-y. Yeah, I am. I'm taking it all in, you know? Yes. Any, any, anyone you don't like out there? No, Marshawn. Yeah, be here. Very, very few people like him. Watching some Bruins players? Uh, player. Player, which one? Brad Marchand. Oh, he's a handsome guy, that guy. Big nose. Yeah, yeah, very, very small nose. Yeah. Catherine, remember me? Keith, you're looking very beautiful up there, sir. Hi, remember me? You're doing great. One of the coolest of all-star traditions is the player's pre-game red carpet walk. Of course, in Tampa Bay Lightning territory, Brad Marchand's reception is, shall we say, mixed. Boo! Having fun? Nice. Were you booing? No. No. You were that's all right. For you. Yeah, you were. No, that's all right. You guys having fun? Yeah. Number 63 does have some Bruins fans on his side. The TD Bank Mini One-on-One -on -one Champions from New England, who are here to play for the national championship and cheer on their guy. Go Bruins! Nice guys. 
Wow, you guys killed it. Right. Awesome. What do you think, Marsh? That's me. <laughs> From the Boston Bruins, number 63, Brad Marshall. He's obviously not a fan favorite in Tampa, but Brad Marchand definitely enjoyed his all-star appearance. And regardless of what the rest of the league thinks, here in New England, we love our little ball of hate. Well, it's kind of in a good mood for the man that everybody loves to hate. Coming out of the All-Star break, the Bruins are looking good. Though missing some key players, they are riding an 18-game point streak. Tonight, Jake DeBrusque and the boys look to make it 19 against the Anaheim Ducks. Cut! Not a good start for Boston in this one, as they find themselves down 2-0 after the first and looking for answers. Too easy. Too easy to play against right now. Keep kicking, Dolby. Keep kicking. As the game progresses, the bees find their legs, and the intensity mounts. Late in the third, all that tension starts to boil over. Sure is hot. Get a little spicy. We got it. We got to do it. Got lots of time. We got to do it now. Yeah. The Ducks victorious 3-1 over the Bruins tonight, their first regulation loss since December 14th. Yes, a disappointing loss. But as January closes, the Bruins' torrid play has rocketed them up the standings. Before getting back on the ice, it's time for a team-wide community day, with players fanning out across greater Boston to give back in all kinds of different ways. Oh. You guys are ready for the Olympics here. Oh, my goodness. First up, Tuka Rask and Frank Vetrano visit the Carroll Center for the Blind in Newton to hang out with the students and get a first-hand taste of blind fencing. Yes, I said fencing. I'm sweating now. Though the guy's fencing skills do need some work, this visit was definitely a success. Now, it's on to the senior center in Woburn where some other Bruins are getting geared up. Are you a righty? I got one for you right here. That's a goal scoring stick right there. Oh yeah, it's game on people. And Sean Corrali and Jake DeBrusque better be ready because it sure looks like both these teams came to play today. Oh, breakaway! Again! 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 <laughs> Get it! Oh, it's out! Oh! I think we just gotta make plays, you know, in the neutral zone, they're trapping pretty good there, so just need to get pucks deep, like I said, get some more shots. Test is tender, looks a little stiff there, and uh, really attack 52, that guy is lost out here. Oh, no! Making me look bad now. I thought we were friends. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> Might have been offside. Blake. Oh! 
a hard-fought, tight-checking affair with playoff intensity. And as often happens in games like this, it all comes down to the shootout. I'm glad, I'm glad we got to come, it was fun. Thanks for having us. The St. Louis Blues have arrived in Boston for regular season game number 50. It will be another tough battle for Kevin Miller and the Bruins as they face off against a heavy, playoff-tested opponent. Good play, good play. We'll take that all day. Now left circle, it's fired by DeBrus. Rebound set out in front, trickles on the goal line. They score! Out of way, boys. Hey, right. Way to go to the net, brother. As advertised, it's a hard-hitting physical tilt with high-level intensity. Unfortunately, Kevin leaves the game in the second period due to injury. But as they have done all season long, his teammates step up and finish the job. Gets it free to center, five seconds to go. Bacchus beats the clock and his former team. The Bruins get back to their winning ways as Tuca continues his stellar play and David Bacchus has a huge night against his old team. You earned that one. So much easier without the goalie in there, but uh, great job, guys. Feels good to beat those guys, and uh, all around great effort. Tonight was, a, I, I thought, one of our better all-around games all year in terms of you know, playing with pace early. Being on our toes, taking pucks to net, you know, their, their goal had made a lot of good saves, all right, kept them in the game. We, we, from start to finish, I thought we were committed and, you know, a lot of wall battles in those heavy games. That's the kind of growth we need out of skill part of it, but also battling hard to, to be hard to play against so that in these tight games we're comfortable and we look real comfortable tonight. Certainly lots of good stuff going on inside the TD Garden these days, but there's also some great things happening outside as well. If you've been to a game recently, then you've certainly noticed the construction going on. The project is called The Hub on Causeway, and it's a new mixed-use development that's hitting a big milestone today, the placement of the final beam, known as the topping off ceremony. Over the past couple of months, we've been finally able to realize what we've had this, this vision of our head for, for literally years. And the south wall, the TD Garden, soon will be a wall of glass so event goers and commuters alike can actually see into the TD Garden. Star Market, we're right here. Arc Light Cinemas, Live Nation, and Big Night Entertainment gonna be here for a venue. Citizen M Hotel, and of course, Rapid 7, making a world headquarters right next door here in our hub hut. The hub on Causeway will not only enhance the skyline, but also this great city and our future. Still work to be done, but certainly a lot to look forward to with this unbelievable project. Next up for David Backus and the Bruins, it's time for a huge game against their bitter rivals, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Time for some hard rock at the TD Garden. Keep going. More of this, boys, more of this! Humble, baby! Let's go! Let's go! We're gonna see if you got Hey, hey, we're gonna see if you got
I didn't get going soon enough. Tim Schaller completes the great team effort with an empty netter to ice the game. And the Bruins are victorious once again. A big win over a division foe for the black and gold. It's also a meaningful milestone for team captain Zdeno Chara as he logs the 1400th game of his career. We've been very fortunate and uh, very grateful to play for that long. And, you know, obviously our, our game is measured by wins and losses, but um, you know, during those times when you go, when you have those ups and downs, that's when you're really relying on your teammates. And I've been very lucky to be including a very special group over the years, and uh, this is very, very special, special for me. I really appreciate this, so thank you for everything. Yeah! What's up, Val? How are you? Good to, you, Good to see you too. Thanks for being here. Yeah, no worries. While the Bruins season continues, so too does their work out in the community. Today, Brad Marchand and Tori Krug will be sharing stories about overcoming adversity for Noticeability, an organization that helps kids with dyslexia. That was the time where I failed. Um, so my first game, I played very good. I was really happy. So again, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm here for good. I'm going to stay. And uh, the next 20 went the complete other way. I was the worst player on the ice. And eventually they sent me back down to the minor league. So I was really questioning if my dreams were done or if, if, if they were ever gonna come true. And you know, did I, did I completely ruin my chance of being in the NHL and playing for the Boston Bruins? But luckily I went home in, in the summertime and, and came back and, and made the team. Um, but yeah, that was very tough, bud, because it's not fun when you're supposed to score and you don't. Once the guys finish speaking with the kids, it's time to continue things in a more familiar setting, out on the ice. We were meeting some kids and, and just had a conversation, they asked us some questions, we went through different things that we've, you know, we've had struggles with in the past and tried to relate a little bit to some of the things that the kids uh, struggle with um, at times with school and, and different things. So, uh, and then we're gonna have some fun here and play some hockey. Am I on blue? We gonna win? Yeah! yeah. Oh, we're switching halfway through anyway. I got him! You don't want it, you don't want it. Don't come over here. I'll take it. Oh! Dangle! Here we go, yellow! Oh no, we're on blue! To the net, to the hoop! To the hoop, baby, hoop! Up next for the Bruins, it's a little Motor City Madness, an original six matchup against the Red Wings, and an important test for recent call-up, Austin Zarnick. That's smooth, that's smooth, nice play. Go, go, go. That's there it is. Yeah, David. Yeah. Oh my curls! That a boy. It's a tight one tonight. The Bruins hold a 2-1 lead after two periods, but the Wings are pushing. In the third period, the pressure rises even higher. Yeah, let's go, eh? Let's go, Let's go. Let's get one. Yeah! Yeah, baby! Good job, boys! Good Come board on. check, eh, boys? That's it, Darnie. Good board check. Hey, Sean! Way to be there, eh? Danton Heinen's goal off the Zarnik assist proves to be the eventual game winner, as the Boston Bruins train just keeps on rolling. There it is. Yeah. Huge. Good job. We did a lot of things well tonight. They got to push the end of the 
inevitable is going to happen. There's some areas that you know, that part of our game we can look at and see where we can be better on it. But it was a, it was a good hockey game, good role game. I thought we played really well for the things we're supposed to as the game went on and the full value for it. So that's it. Let's get out of here. Listen up, because I want to tell you something. This Boston Bruins team has become one of the most exciting and complete teams in all of hockey in just four short months. These guys are fun to watch and somehow they're only getting better. So go find your favorite jersey, put it on, and buckle up, because this ride may be only just beginning.